Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Searching in San Diego. I am very excited to have with me today, Dr. Cordelia Noble. She is the Director of Partnerships and Market Development at KRA, and we're going to be talking about women in the workforce. Uh, Dr. Noble, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. So I, I know today we're going to be talking about women in the workforce, uh, and I know that this is a passion of yours. Um, and I think if I'm correct, you've written a dissertation um, titled Study of Leadership Development, Self-Efficacy, and Career Readiness Among African-American Black Women. Is that, is that right? Did I get that right? You, you absolutely nailed it. You're absolutely <laughs> correct. <laughs> okay. So yeah, tell us a little bit about, before we go on more generally, uh, tell us a little bit about what inspired you um, to choose that topic, to write about that topic. Well, again, of course, thank you so much for the opportunity um, to talk about women in the workforce. Um, it's a very important topic. Um, and especially now, since uh, there's been a lot of employment change changes during the uh, pandemic, um, and a lot of things have taken place. So my specific inspiration for this topic um, pretty much came from my personal uh, work experience. Um, I have a long standing career in higher education and also workforce development. So by nature, I, I am a driven individual uh, with high expectations, with high goals. Um, so I'm always interested in opportunities where I can grow and excel and elevate. So in most of those uh, cases from my past experiences, um, I was always determined to excel to higher levels, but often was overlooked for leadership roles. Um, in many cases, of course, I had the education, I had the skills, um, all of the background experience that was needed in order for me to perform very well in those positions. Um, however, upward mobility uh, in many cases became a barrier for me. So then I began to ask the question, why? Uh, why is that a barrier? Um, why is this happening? Um, so then after that, I began speaking to my female friends and my colleagues, um, you know, black and white, um, and just kind of doing a little bit of polling on my own. Um, and what I determined was that there were differences in how women are viewed in the workplace um, relative to career progression. So at that point, um, I was on a mission and my goal uh, was to examine experiences of African-American, Black women, um, their leadership development, and how it impacts their career readiness for those leadership roles. So my past experiences provided the drive that I needed to complete my research and write a book on this very topic. We're going to talk, uh, you know, at points globally about women, and then we're also going to talk mm -hmm. about African-American women, which of course mm -hmm. <laughs> you are one. What do you think that, are, did you find that there are particular challenges that African-American women face in the workplace, particularly that interested you in, in, in um, exploring that in your work? Absolutely, good question. Um, well, of course, uh, being that I am a black woman, um, I wanted to help my sisters who have been uh, experiencing some of the same things that I have experienced in the past. Um, and according to my research, African-American Black women are the most disadvantaged compared to any other ethnicity, ethnicity in all areas of life, um, socially, uh, economically, um, and these barriers uh, affect their overall leadership ability and how they become career ready. So that's very important. So keep that in mind. Um, these factors also make it challenging uh, for African-American women to reach their full potential. Um, and for those who are not aware of the specific stats relating to African-American women, um, in comparison to white women, uh, African-American and Black women are less likely to be hired for higher wage professional jobs. Uh, they rank less in academia. Um, so with me being higher education, of course, I can definitely relate to that. And they face higher unemployment rate. Um, also, African-American Black women have an increased in current um, of discrimination um, in housing and health and in jobs. And so for that reason, focusing on African-American Black women um, just became a natural passion for me. Thank you. So the COVID-19 pandemic has obviously changed the landscape of work in a lot of ways. 
uh, I have heard <laughs> that, and I've read that particularly it was tough for, for women. And do you have any thoughts or insights about the impact of COVID-19, of the pandemic for women in the workplace in particular? Absolutely. As we know, uh, balancing work and family um, obligations has long been a reality for women in the workplace. Um, so this pandemic has been very taxing on everyone, on all of us. Um, we've all been impacted in some way, shape, or form. So specifically, women in general, historically, women have been the primary caregivers um, in their families. This has remained true uh, even as most women work outside of the home and they provide important contributions to the household income. So mothers working full time, they spend about 50% more time each day caring for the children um, and the household uh, matters in compared to fathers who work full time. So of course, as a result, you know, during the pandemic, when the schools shut down, uh, when the daycares closed, um, including the after school programs, um, the woman was the main person that had to make the adjustment and possibly even reduce her hours um, or forego her employment entirely in order to care for the household. So this made women uh, disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. Um, and as you know, to this day, uh, women are still trying to recover. Um, and it's going to take a long time uh, for women to get back on their get back on track and get back on their feet. And um, this will even take place even after the pandemic. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's telling, right? That women <laughs> women not only are working outside the house, but they're still doing all the stuff <laughs> that we that they were doing when they were supposedly <laughs> just working at home. Um, let's talk Absolutely. about leadership development. Um, and mentorship opportunities at work. I know this is something that you studied. Why, why are these things so important in the workplace? Access to leadership development, access to mentorship. Well, of course, leadership development is, is very crucial. It's very crucial. Um, and I know this focus is primarily on African-American Black women, but, you know, of course, leadership development in general is important for individuals who are interested in elevating to higher levels. Um, soft skills, uh, belief structures, and um, uh, development of those core competencies are elements of leadership development that facilitate the transition from college to career. So, however, what about the women who have not attended a college or a university? Um, so uh, when they are seeking opportunities, most employers simply assume uh, that persons have some measure of those leadership elements. Um, so when candidates apply for those positions, that's, that's the general assumption, that they do have that um, background experience and those leadership elements already. So, of course, as we know, uh, you know, in regards to leadership development, um, leadership development aims to help people understand through social and relational learning, the different processes in order to build relationships, um, in order to work um, productively uh, with others. Um, it allows them to have access to resources and also relational learning um, networks. So while uh, DEI, and you hear this a lot, um, lately more in the general public. Um, so while DEI and those initiatives um, uh, and encouraging diversity becomes a focus uh, and more critical to those corporations, African-American Black women cannot take advantage of opportunities if they lack training in being effective leaders. They also lack training and being effective leaders, which actually leads to, um, you know, them lacking the skills and also being career ready for those positions. So it's pretty much a trickle down effect, um, a lack of leadership development opportunities and a lack of career readiness could lead to a lack in African-American women in the workforce or, or those leadership positions. So this is why leadership development is so crucial. So what advice would you have then for African-American women who are looking to access those opportunities at work? Well, definitely first, uh, you know, we need to uh, educate women. We need to educate black women 
um, in regards to the importance of leadership development, mentoring, um, and of course, education is key. Um, and hopefully, uh, this podcast will be a uh, benefit to someone. Um, they can glean some information and some insights from the information that I'm sharing today. Um, I would also encourage any African American or Black woman who are trying to access leadership development opportunities or mentorship opportunities for that matter, uh, to diligently seek out those opportunities. That's, that's going to be important. Um, where organizations do not provide those opportunities uh, for formal, formal mentors. Um, and pretty much a formal mentor is someone that um, um, has that influence, um, a person that's going to guide an individual on a regular basis um, that will result in a desired outcome. That is a formal mentor. Um, so if they're unable to access formal mentors, um, definitely seek out a informal mentor. So an informal mentor is just someone who um, also has influence, um, but they will meet them on a casual basis to kind of help them kind of get through some of the structural things that they're dealing with um, within their, uh, their career. So I would advise them to uh, seek those mentorships, um, you know, whether they're within the organization or outside the organization. Um, and, and, and many times as women, uh, we are afraid um, to ask for one reason or another. So it's important to speak up. It's important to be heard um, and be an advocate for yourself. Thank you. And um, how about for organizations? There's been an increased awareness mm -hmm. for organizations about the need for greater diversity, equity, inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you have for organizations who want to who want to recruit, but also retain <laughs> yes. uh, women of yeah uh, African American women? Yes, recruiting and um, and retaining um, a, a a wonderful workforce is of course is a, it's key to the economy. Uh, we all know that. So I'm glad that you did ask that question. Um, first, let me say uh, that hiring candidates. Um, such as African-American Black women to ensure diversity um, and a qualified talent pool is necessary uh, for the, on, on a global level. It's very necessary. Uh, workplace diversity is critical for employees because um, it helps to build an excellent reputation for the organization. Um, it leads to increased profits and it allows other opportunities for those um, employees. So uh, as we know, organizations tend to flourish uh, when they're able to demonstrate their commitment through diversity and inclusion. So of course, in order to do this, um, my suggestion is that companies uh, must take a first step and have on their staff a chief uh, diversity and inclusion officer, uh, someone who's going to focus on those efforts and move them forward and, and ensure that those DEI initiatives are being met. Um, because as we know, DEI, um, you know, it, it looks great on paper and it sounds good when you say it. Um, however, often implementation is a totally different issue. Um, so it's key that organizations are held accountable and um, that they are implementing uh, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, effectively. This has been great. I really appreciate it. I, I kind of want to just uh, open up the floor to you. Is there anything else, uh, any final words that you'd like to share with our listeners? I guess I would just have to say to the listeners, um, just I want to encourage them, um, whoever's listening to this podcast, um, and just say that, of course, you are responsible uh, for your own career. Um, and just do whatever it is that you need to do to achieve the higher levels that you desire. Um, speak up, ask questions, uh, and advocate for yourself because you do matter. And how can people learn more about your work? Like we can find your dissertation online, right? Tell us a little yes. bit about that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can, you can find it online. Um, it's published through ProQuest. So, you know, any individuals can go online to ProQuest.com and type in my name or type in the title of my book. 
um, a study of leadership development, self-efficacy, and career readiness among African-American Black women. Um, you can pull that up online. You can Google um, the title as well, and I will come up. So, of course, I'm always um, here to support specifically African-American Black women. Um, of course, I have been there, so I can relate. Um, and this is how I choose um, to give back to the community in my own way, um, along with, of course, another uh, leadership opportunity uh, that I'm currently working on, um, which is not yet public. Um, but, you know, I will be addressing some of the different points that we talked about in this podcast. Um, I'm always available uh, via email at knoble at kra.com. Um, should individuals be interested in learning more about my work or if they would like to purchase a book um, or uh, if they have any opportunities for a speaking engagement uh, where they can learn more of how to support African-American and Black women within their organizations. Dr. Cordelia Noble, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today at Search in San Diego and for sharing your words of wisdom with us. Thank you so much.